breaking, Comey just shocked entire courtroom with who he revealed is the real leaker, in yesterday's testimony FBI Director James Comey finally admitted to the whole world that he himself was the one who leaked his conversations with President Donald Trump to the mainstream media. Fired FBI Director James Comey delivered some of the most watched political circus in decades by calling out the lies he himself told after President canned him. He actually took to task an administration he claims chose to demean him and claimed he felt the president directed him to call off an FBI investigation. To only admit moments later that he had leaked the conversations against the president himself. To make matters worse James Comey said he leaked the information to the media via a friend of his who's a law professor at Columbia University. Now, remember James Comey knows the law and he doesn't want to perjure himself. He didn't give a name as to who that law professor was but part of me wonders if that Columbia law professor isn't former President Barack Hussein Obama who was a law professor at Columbia from 1992 to his election to the U.S. Senate in 2004. Keep in mind Comey also revealed that Hussein Obama's own Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who had that famous meeting on the airport tarmac in Phoenix with former President Bill Clinton, gave him the order to never refer to the Hillary Clinton case as an investigation, only as a matter. It all seems very fishy to anyone who has at least a functioning IQ of over 80. This all stinks to high heaven and it needs to be investigated fully. The Washington Post reports, Comey's testimony was a net plus for Trump It is never a good day when a former FBI director calls you a liar, but considering the high stakes and all that could have gone wrong, James B. Comey's testimony Thursday was a net plus for President Trump. In a way, Comey did a lot of what Trump had always wanted him to do He confirmed the president was never under investigation and he did not say the president had committed any crimes. There is no defending Trump's treatment of Comey. It was clumsy, naive, and smarmy. But it did not even come close to being criminal. And regardless of what the Democrats and their allies in the media will howl about, the real story here is that Comey's testimony strengthens the president's ultimate case. Up until Thursday, it was easy for Republicans and Democrats to take aim at Comey and rightfully so. He stumbled in handling the Hillary Clinton debacle and he stayed in the spotlight with Trump for too long. But Comey's testimony today made clear that the former FBI director did not find Trump's supposed remarks made over the phone, at a private dinner, or in the Oval Office as constituting obstruction of justice. Liberals will have you believe otherwise, but they must be disappointed that their silver bullet seems to be melting. Regarding the Michael Flynn investigation, Comey testified Trump said, I hope you can let this go. Had Comey believed the president obstructed justice by making that statement, steps would have been taken to immediately pursue the matter. But, as Comey confirmed, Trump was never under investigation during his tenure at the FBI. After each encounter with the president, Comey went about his business, thereby confirming the president had not crossed a legal line. To the usual suspects on the left, that does not matter. It is more important, from their perspective at least, to keep the story alive and to tarnish the president. Initially, Comey seemed happy to oblige. But, as Comey made clear in his prepared statement, at the time he left his post he was not aware of evidence to suggest Trump colluded with the Russian government. No investigation, not from the FBI or any congressional committee has established otherwise. Likewise, the fact that the directors of National Intelligence and the National Security Agency testified Wednesday they were never pressured to do anything inappropriate with respect to ongoing investigations should be enough to confirm that there was no crime. The only collusion revealed from last year's campaign was the shocker that former Attorney General Loretta E. Lynch had done some wordsmithing for the Clinton campaign. She is no Frank Luntz, but Lynch instructed Comey to call the investigation into Clinton a matter, not an investigation. If that's not trying to influence an election, I don't know what is. Everyone suspected Lynch was eager to keep her job in a would-be Clinton administration, but no one knew that she would go as far as to demand the FBI use gentle language on Clinton's behalf. With a special counsel afoot, everything is fair game. The Democrats will argue that even if there was no criminal collusion, someone namely the president must have obstructed justice in trying to suppress the investigation of the non-crime. Good luck with that. Between Comey's testimony and that of the nation's top national security professionals, 
it will be impossible for anyone, even the most determined anti-Trump Democrat, to reconstruct Comey's testimony as evidence of criminal activity. Regardless of what Democrats would have you believe, the president still has the advantage of being innocent. He is lucky to have not squandered that advantage. At some point, the search for a crime will run its course and fade away, but it is up to the White House to be sure-footed and keep mistakes to a minimum. Is it possible the president has learned a lesson? If Trump can let the hearing settle, compartmentalize the whole matter and let the independent counsel do his work, the Russia investigation and all its subsidiaries will conclude without evidence of a crime. Everyone in the White House and Republicans on Capitol Hill should look at Thursday's hearing as a win. They should quiet down, get back to work, and let the Democrats aimlessly flail around Washington. It will not be pleasant, but it won't be deadly. As we all knew from day one James Comey today verified this whole Trump-slash-Russia collision deal was always a big nothing burger. He also claimed later on in his interview that the Russians did indeed try to mess with our elections, but that not even one vote was affected by it. If President Trump can now manage to stop the White House leaks I predict we are in for some smooth sailing from now on. That is until the globalists and the left stream media dream up some more fantasies as to why their candidate Hillary Clinton got her behind handed to her in the 2016 presidential election. Please share if you are tired of the media talking points and fake news towards the right. Please do not forget like on videos, and subscribe, and comment because your voice matters, and visit our page on Facebook, and like them, and follow up. And thanks for watching.